Hmm. Court will call the case of Mark Mancic versus Rebecca DeVoot. This matter is before the court uh, for a continued pretrial conference as well as an order to show cause issued by this court at the request of the defendant, Rebecca DeVoot. This hearing is being conducted via Zoom. Uh, President is Attorney Maria Zagorski representing the plaintiff, Mark Mancic. Mr. Mancic is present with Ms. Zagorski. Good morning, Ms. Zagorski. In addition, good morning, Your Honor. In addition, attorneys Kimberly Kuhn and Eric Chappell are present representing the defendant, Rebecca DeVoot, and Mr. DeVoot is present with uh, Ms. Kuhn in her office. Good morning, Ms. Kuhn and Mr. Chappell. Morning, morning, Your Honor. Uh, the court overheard uh, conversations between uh, the court reporter and uh, Mr. Walker from the court about listening to the, the recordings of a prior uh, hearing proceeding to clarify language in an order. The court's opinion, let's just move forward. I mean, we're uh, I'd argue over a day or four hours or two hours of makeup parenting time. Um, it's cost these parties a lot of money. And I think we need to clarify the order regarding pickups, drop-offs, timeframes, holidays, and just move forward. So that's court's opinion. Um, and, uh, and of course, the front of the court is making it easy because the front of the court is preparing these orders. If the, the attorney thinks there's a discrepancy in the orders, the attorney should be preparing the orders. Uh, but the, of course, the front of the court has been kind enough to assist the, the court and the parties with preparing those orders. In any event, uh, Mr. Walker, do you have a recommendation for the court this morning? I do, Your Honor. I have put it in your queue, but I can read it into the record if you would like. Okay, let me just uh, maybe I need to refresh here. Apologize for the delay. In event, uh, Ms. Gorski, Ms. Kuhn, Mr. Chappell, the uh, recommendation of Mr. Walker um, is that mother shall be told to make a printing time of two hours for the time she missed on January 15, 2024, Marmot King Day, and that all future exchanges shall be at 9 a.m. We need to clarify the exchanges are either at daycare or if there's no daycare at the Selene Police Department. Is that what the our practice has been yes right so perhaps we should clarify that mr walker i'm not sure what else we need to clarify that the all exchanges shall occur at daycare um, and if daycare is closed then it'll be at the saline police department i will do that here. some there's some disagreement as to uh, the makeup time as well as the time of the exchanges so um Ms. Gorski, do you want to go first in terms of the, what's your client's position on this recommendation? Yes, thank you, Judge. Um, as I've acknowledged in my response, my client uh, believed Martin Luther King was a holiday, and so he did have the child from 4.30 to 6.30, and it was not a front of the court holiday. We acknowledged that there were two hours there that needed to be made up. Um, but with respect to the exchange time, um, my client is of the position that this nine o'clock exchange is not fair to Maggie. Um, she's She's been at Stony Creek Preschool for two years, and it is the only thing that provides consistency and stability while her family goes through this transition. Um, and and so he, he's of the opinion that, that Maggie should be allowed to go to school and that the party should be exchanging at 4.30 after school. What mom likes to do is go and pick up the child from school after my client drops her off. And Maggie should be in school with her friends every day. She should have that pattern and that um, stability. The, the 9, 9 a.m. exchange time doesn't do that because mom will go and get her from school. And he also notes that um, school ends at 4 o'clock. We intended that Maggie go to school and at four o'clock, the parent whose parenting time it was would pick her up and then go to Selene and exchange her. So we think that the exchange should be 4.30 and not nine o'clock. If it's my client's overnight, then he should have her the next day until 4.30 when they exchange. The 9 a.m. exchange time isn't just isn't fair to the child. The whole object is to minimize contact between the parents, which is really unfortunate to think about it. Isn't that the whole uh, thought behind this? Is that they pick up and drop off at uh, at school, and the only time yes. to meet the police department is when there is no school. And uh, is there a school during the summer too? Daycare. There's daycare. Yes. It's daycare. She's yeah. She's four. It's it's preschool. It's an educational daycare, Your Honor. So right. uh, my client doesn't 
pull the child out all the time. That is such a mischaracterization. And Mr. Mansick has pulled the child out. It's educational daycare, number one. It's not state mandated, as the court is well aware. Nine o'clock exchange, they drop the child off to the education or educational daycare at 9 a.m. The exchange is at 9 a.m. They're not seeing each other. They're only dealing with each other if there's no daycare. So yes, so we want to minimize the contact. Your Honor, I'll be filing a motion for my client to get vacation parenting time. Nothing ever occurs. These parties do not co-parent. They do not agree on anything. I had to file an ex parte motion for the child to even just go to a school for, for you know, just, just to even get on the placement. So you are 100% right, Your Honor. They do not co-parent. They do not agree. The nine o'clock exchange is the perfect exchange because the less contact we have with these two at this point, the better off we are, Your Honor. Right, Judge, she, Ms. Kuhn didn't need to file an ex parte petition for Maggie to go to Emerson. My client was intending to take her. My client did take her on Friday and in fact went back subsequently for his own private tour without the child with him. He went back on Monday. Maggie's already announced that she's going to Emerson. She told my client that because that's what her mother tells her. It, it, it's over the top, but all of that aside, the issue here is when parenting time begins and ends. And I'm simply asserting for both parents, if it's their overnight, they have the next day until 4.30 at the Saline Police Department. That's what the order says. And it makes sense. This child should be in school every day. It is an educational preschool. And she is getting the um, benefits of that consistent schedule. Sorry. Your Honor, we want to minimize. We want to minimize contact. The nine o'clock exchange the drop-off occurs at 9 a.m. It's the other parent's parenting time. And with regard to Mr. Mansix, if you look at the conversations on Exhibit 1 for the ex parte motion to even have the child go to school, you'll see the game playing. He never confirms it. And Ms. Zagorski saying, well, you should have gotten a hold of me. Well, if counsel has to sit here and micromanage, that's a clear indication that these parties don't communicate, don't co-parent. Mr. Walker's recommendation is a sound recommendation. And in fact, Your Honor, if you look at your order, um, the June order, it states that the above exchanges shall occur at 9 a.m. I don't believe, respectfully, that there's any ambiguity in that order. Mm -hmm. I'm asking that the 9 a.m. parenting time be reaffirmed or affirmed in the order that's before um, that, that's part of that recommendation, Your Honor. It makes the most sense. It allows for the least amount of contact. My client plans on Maggie attending her preschool. So, you know, there's been no uh, motions before you by opposing counsel stating that it hasn't, you know, that there's been an issue. There's no issue, Your Honor. But we would like the nine o'clock exchange time. It makes the most sense. It comports with what was agreed on last time. I don't believe that there's an ambiguity, Your Honor. And with that being said, I'm asking that the court adopt Mr. Walker's recommendation. Ms. Zagorski and I can go back and forth on the two hours. Hopefully we'll be able to figure that out. I don't have any um, confidence of the parties will. So I can send Ms. Zagorski um, a two hour you know, window where my client can have two additional hours. I'll also be asking her about some vacation summer parenting time in May. If we can't resolve that, then we'll be back. What, what, again, yes, the, the order, and I've got the order in front of me, and it seems reference that certain above exchanges struck for nine o'clock. But uh, what's been the practice other than, of course, this order references Father's Day, Mother's Day, and, uh, uh, and some time in July, July 4th and July 11th. What have the parties been practicing? Obviously, it's a 2 2 3 schedule. So the parent who has a child that weekend takes the child to daycare, correct? Yeah, Judge. In the morning? And the other yeah, parent picks up after daycare? No, mom has been going and getting the child in the morning and the, and I'll get the attendance records. Dr. Wooten has them right now. I will get the attendance records and I will submit them to you at, with a, a motion to have her stop taking this child out of school every day. What she does is she takes my client's time. She just goes and picks the child up from school and the attendance records will show this. Dr. Wooten has them right now. Um, my client does not do that. She goes and she picks up the child so Maggie doesn't get the benefit of being in school all day because she thinks her time starts at 9. My client thinks her time starts at 4.30 and his time starts at 
The child should be so having, and that's, and that's my client's concern is that Maggie is the one who loses with a nine o'clock exchange. Maggie loses. Right. Is it, does uh, that occur every Monday? Uh, Mr. No, Blue does not work on Mondays? She she does that on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I think, right? Goes and picks me up. Emily, she picks her up on Friday. Friday? For a long weekend. At at nine? Yes. Okay. So she takes her out on Fridays. But the intended no, I mean, judge. She takes her out often. Judge, but, it's a preschool daycare. It's daycare, number one. Number two, if she care. takes her out, or it is a daycare. It's an educational daycare. She's four. She's not even, it's not even state mandated, Your Honor. She is in school on Fridays. If my client picks her up a little early for a long weekend, there's no issue. And well, as I stated so before- children need, children need consistency and continuity. So what right now, so does mom pick her up uh, just on Fridays or just Mondays or just is it random? She just picks her up. I mean, uh, most kids most kids like that to see their friends. Uh, I've got grandchildren there, six and four. They 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 uh, they like their school, even though it's not stand, main, mandated. It's a uh, certainly it's more than just babysitting. It's preschool. Um, so what is her schedule? The, the child's schedule right now is she there Monday through Friday or just just uh, one day? She's she Monday that? through Friday, nine to four, and mom goes and for picks it? her up randomly. And my and judge, so so my client's never been happy about that. He didn't rush into court and accuse mom of wrongdoing. When we talk about co-parenting, I think it's evident what's going on here. Mom makes the rules however she sees fit. And so this kid is the one who loses. That is so, so not let's, true. Let's, uh, I'm, I'm trying to understand the the past practice. For example, if it's uh, if it's dad's weekend. Then dad takes uh, the child back to, to school on Monday morning, correct? 9 yes. a.m. And then it's mom's time. Exactly. The exchanges have been at daycare at 9 a.m. That's what we've done. But that's not an exchange. That's dropping the child off at school. The exchange per the order is at the Saline Police Department at 430. The intent was that Maggie would be in school all day. She gets out at four and then my client could drive her to Saline in 30 minutes. Mr. That Marcy, was read the, the order. That's not the intent. Exchanges shall occur at child care facility. If no child care, parties shall meet at Saline Police Station at 430. The Correct. exchanges occur at 9 a.m. If there's no child care, then at 430. There's always child care. Yeah. It's a child care facility, too. Your yeah. Honor, 9 a.m. makes sense. My client doesn't need to meet Mr. Mansick. Mr. Mansick can't even give her a okay to take the child to Emerson. Look who's playing the games. We don't want to put these people together more than what we have to. If we're exchanging at 9 a.m., if you want my client to say, okay, she will be in daycare, she will pick her up after daycare on her day, she'll do that, correct? It's hard for clarity. What do you and so not pulling her out early, even though it's daycare. You'll leave her in daycare Monday through Friday on your days, correct? On my days? Yes. Yeah. But uh, so my... Because of my schedule, a lot of times, every time I took her out early at 9 a.m., I, e I emailed Mark through App Close, and that's what I would do. I, I, didn't, I wasn't hiding it. I have to sign in when I would do it. Um, a lot of times for me, because I have my job is in three different locations, it's easier to go pick her up. But can't you stay so you were only taking her out for two hours early? Yeah, sometimes it was just two o'clock. I would run over there because of get her up other things. It's not the only times I took her out at 9 a.m. around 9 a.m. Mark received some kind of communication. How late is the daycare facility open until six? So really it ends at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. So if you're taking her out at two, it really ends at 6 p.m. anyway. And you're all taking her out at four anyway. So that's the time that you've chosen and to take her out. Four is the time Mark shows. I've, I've, um, sometimes I pick her up at 4.30. Sometimes I've picked her up at five. It depends on my schedule. My schedule all has right. always been different. All right. Thank you, Mr. Voot. Uh, we've got a very good busy morning. It appears that if, if uh, daycare is on mom's time, she should be able to take the child out of school. And then likewise, dad, if dad has, uh, wants a, a, a nice day, wants to do something with his daughter, it's his day, and, and he should be able to do that. But it does occur that all change should, should occur at the child care facility. So who's ever got the, the weekend, uh, uh, they take the, 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 the child to daycare Monday morning, and then daycare begins at what, nine o'clock, whatever time it begins. 
So do we need a specified time? It seems like the only time we need a specified time, maybe I'm missing something. The only time we need to re reference a time frame is when there's no school. And it, and it appears that when there's no school, it should be at 430. I, am I missing something? No, that's what the order says, Judge. The, I think the controversy is between in those hours between 9 and 430. And if it's, day mom's day, day. if it's mom's day, she, if she wants to take her, she's got a, off work, and she wants to spend time with her, take her to lunch, she should be able to do that. But then she takes the child back to daycare so that uh, whenever it's dad's time, dad can pick her up, pick her up, whatever, at the end of her um, Tuesday schedule. But, so but, then court's inclined to simply suggest that with all exchanges occur at the child care facility, and if there's no child care, why should we leave the, uh, the Selene Police Department at 430? Or uh, 9 o'clock, Judge. Present? Judge, sure. we can meet at 9 a.m. in the morning, too. Why don't we just keep it all 9 a.m. since we have to keep coming back on these issues? My client can meet Mr. Mansick at the Selene Police Department at 9 a.m. And we can what do the, the exchange. What the child be at, Ms. School, would the child be going to school? What, if what there's no school. Be? If there's I'm no sorry? school, Judge. If there's no okay. school, if there's no school, we can still meet at 9 a.m. So, so the issue, Judge, is if it's if it's, for example, Mark's overnight on Tuesday, and he drops Maggie off Wednesday morning. Whose day is Wednesday? Rebecca thinks that her day begins at 9 a.m., and Mark thinks her day begins at 4.30. It's that, at 4, 4, you exchange at 4.30. It's that, what is it, seven hours in between that is the abyss. Um, Rebecca thinks that that's her day, so she can go remove this child from the facility. Mark thinks that the child should be in the facility all day and that it's it's Maggie's time at school and that the exchange time is actually 4.30 and not 9 a.m. Do, do you Gosh. follow me? Yeah, yes. but that makes no sense. If if the exchange time is nine, that means the parent who has the child at nine a.m. is responsible for the day until the next parent until the next parent exchange. That makes no sense, Maria. I'm sorry, but if, if the exchange occurs at nine and it's mom's day and and it's her parenting time, she's responsible for that day. When she brings the child back for dad's exchange time, he gets the whole day. So exchange time at nine means the parent who is coming into possession, that's their parenting time. But they come into possession at 4.30 and they get 24 at hours. Nine. 4 .30 until at 4 .30, nine. Until 4.30. Until 4.30. Until 4.30. No, no Ms. Sigorski, if at nine o'clock, if the child's sick and the parent, the parent whose parenting time it is, they're going to call that parent and say, your child's sick, come pick her up. That it's nine o'clock is the exchange time. So mom would be responsible for the time that the child is in school during that time. The exchange time is nine. I don't understand why that's so difficult. It, it's very because, simple. Because Mark is, or, or Rebecca is going to take the child to child care at 9 a.m. or yep. keep the child until 4.30 if there is no, no child care. Nine o'clock day because it was her overnight the night before. That's why I'm asking that the 4.30, not be 4.30, that the parties exchange, if there's no daycare, they exchange at 9 a.m. If we make the 9 a.m. time consistent with whether there is daycare or there isn't daycare, we don't have that issue. That's why I'm asking, Your Honor, if we can not do an exchange at 4.30, if we can just do all the exchanges at 9 a.m. If there's no daycare that day, they can meet at the Saline Police Station and it's a 9 a.m. exchange. If it's Mr. Mansick's parenting time, he has her all day. My client is asking that the, that the child be afforded a consistent schedule and be permitted to go to school, that the parties exchange at 4.30. And that's what the order says. If there's no school, she can't go to school. That's and then the she point. should stay with the parent in whose home she woke up. So if there's no school and she wakes up in Mark's house, he should have her until 4.30 that day. He should exchange her at nine. If she's sick, if we, she should stay in the home where she wakes up until later that day. Both parents, I'm sure, are capable of caring for a sick child. Your Honor, I would ask that you adopt the recommendation and that the exchange time be consistent or we're going to be back. If we do a nine o'clock exchange time, either the child's going to our educational daycare for the day or if daycare is closed, they're going to be with the other parent. It just makes sense. I will get you those records, Judge. Ms. DeVoot does not allow this kid to be in school all day. I'll get you the records. Get the records, Ms. Zagorski. I'll get them oh. too. So that is such a mischaracterization. Okay. 
All right. Do we need to talk about the two hours? I mean, I don't, I don't want to come back next uh, in two weeks to talk about the two hours. Let's, let's address the two hours and make a parenting time two today. Hours, and let's talk about summer parenting time today. So I'm going to have you talk with Mr. Walker about the two hours and summer parenting time. Lastly, the party for a mediate with Mr. Godfrey February 19th. What happened with that mediation? Judge, we're waiting on Dr. Wooten's recommendation. It was rescheduled to June 4th. Okay. And uh, Mr. Walker, the, the, other thing, uh, the courts can order that both parties complete the high conflict solutions workshop. It's uh, They can do it online. It's one word, high conflict solution. Uh, it's... Uh, The plural, highconflictsolutions.com. Both parties are ordered to complete that class, and each party is to write a hundred word essay to the, the court with the copy of the front of the court of what they learned from that class. This child's four years old. They need to start co parenting. And uh, I've, heard, I've heard good things about this program. Uh, perhaps it would assist for the benefit of the minor child. So I'll come back and uh, I'll consider this recommendation of Mr. Walker, but I'd like the parties to agree upon, let's say, let's tie down those two hours today. Let's talk about summer parenting time. It's okay. uh, it's March right now, before we know it's, uh, um, now obviously the daycare, that's year round, correct? correct? Yes. But Ms. Gorski, the court's opinion is that, yes, if a child's at daycare and uh, maybe it's a, it's a beautiful day and uh, mom or dad wants to do something, it's their day, they should be able to take that child out of school even though I agree that child needs to be primarily consistent in terms of going to school, uh, but there, there can always be, should always be exceptions to add some flexibility. Well, uh, sure. So if they wake up and they want to keep Maggie home for the day, they should be able to do that. And that's what I'm saying. They keep her home and then exchange her at four 30. I agree. Okay. Let's say I've talked to Mr. Walker about the, the two hours. Let's tie that down as well as the summer. Okay. Back to the breakout room? Yes, please. Okay. There we go. Well, let's make sure yep, okay. Court recall the case of Mark Mansick versus Rebecca DeVoot. Uh, the, we're back on the record. The parties have again conferred with Mr. Walker at the request of the court regarding the, the various outstanding issues, including the makeup uh, two hours parenting time that everyone appears to. I agree that two hours, uh, you know, at least the recommendation is two hours to make a parenting time to mother as well as some her parenting time. So uh, the court has received the following revised recommendation from Mr. Walker. Uh, his recommendation continues to be is that all parenting time changes shall be at 9 a.m. Uh, from daycare or school. If there's no daycare or school, the change shall be at the senior police department. Again, 9 a.m. So all change at 9 a.m. Mother shall make a parent time of two hours for the time she missed on January 15, 2024. Those two hours shall occur March 18th, which is the Monday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, and obviously is dad's Monday, correct? So presumably mom would pick up, mom would drop off the child at nine o'clock, then dad would drop off, mom would pick up then shortly thereafter. Is that correct? Mr. Mm -hmm. Walker, is that what's what is anticipated? No, the opposite. I believe, Your Honor, that that's Dad's Monday, so Mom would typically drop off at nine a.m., and then Dad would I, be able to drop at nine. So Mom is keeping the minor child until eleven. He'll pick up and drop off would be at eleven a.m. that day instead of nine. gotcha. All right, so that'd be Mom's weekend. So rather than uh, Mom going to take the child back to school at nine, Mom could keep the child to eleven o'clock that morning. All right, thank you for that clarification. It's further recommended that each party should have two weeks of uninterrupted, non-executive vacation during the summer. Mother shall have the first choice on even years. Father shall have the first choice on odd years. Of course, this is an, an even year. The party that has the first choice shall pick the vacation time uh, on or before April 1st of that year. Uh, the party shall not take the vacation time during the other party's weekend. Uh, further that, uh, both parties shall complete the high conflict solutions uh, dot com workshop and to provide the 100, write a 100 word essay. I want them to give some thought to what they have learned from this class, hopefully something, and they can share that with the court. So each parties will order to write a 100 word essay regarding what they have learned from the High Conflict Solutions class and provide that to the court. Uh, that's the guy's recommendation. 
Yes. Do you um, logistically do you want us to um, submit that to the front of the court? Then is that how you want that provided? To, uh, uh, yes, the, to the court and the front of the court. Uh, the court wants to likewise uh, see firsthand uh, their respective essays. Do you want those submitted under seal, Your Honor? Um, not as a filing, then. Correct. Maybe just yeah. These okay, were not. Just, these were not going to the court file. Okay, so just a proof of service that we submitted to the court and to the front of the court. I don't know if you need proof of service. Obviously, if the, the, the court has received though, the court's going to bring it to the party's attention. So I don't okay. know if you need to be that formal with a proof of uh, service mailing. And I suppose it's a good idea for the parents to exchange their respective essays. Well, what's your thoughts, Ms. Gorski and uh, Ms. Kuhn, Mr. Chapel, Mr. Walker, what's your thoughts in terms of the parties exchanging their respective essays so they can their reflections can be shared with the other parent? Great idea, I think. Yep, no objection. Any objection? Nope. Objection. I'm sorry, Ms. Gorski, yeah, you're muted. No objection. All right, so the parties uh, shall now be provided to the court in front of the court, but they'll uh, provide each other with a copy of that. All right, uh, with respect to this recommendation, uh, uh, Mr. Gorski, and I, again, I understand your position is still the exchange should be at 4.30. Um, would, um, what about the makeup parenting time, the summer vacation? Uh, any additional uh, concerns, thoughts, argument this morning, Ms. Gorski? Yeah, I don't I don't have any objection to the makeup parenting time. I think that the summer parenting time is poorly constructed. I think that the person who has the 4th of July under the front of the court holiday schedule should have the first choice every year so that they can incorporate their week with the 4th of July. Mr. Walker did not agree with me and is making his recommendation. I understand it. I do not agree with the recommendation, as you know. Okay. What's significant about the 4th of July? Usually the first holiday is Memorial Weekend. Correct, Your Honor. And Mr. Mansick knows that my client's extended you family comes into town around the week of Fourth of July. So was, that's was why that we didn't agree. That's why we didn't agree, and that's why Mr. Walker made the recommendation of even odd years. All right, I'm sorry, Ms. Gorski. Were you asking me, Judge? Yes, Ms. Gorski. To answer that question, the answer is. For example, my client has the 4th of July this year, and he may want to take that week, like so many people in Michigan do, and go up north. It's my understanding Ms. DeBoot has family coming. Her, her family holiday is going to be interrupted by his 4th of July anyway, and she can, if she has that family event, she'll have it next year when it's her 4th of July. It just seems to me easier that whoever has the day of the 4th should be able to take their week to incorporate the 4th. I, Mr. Walker didn't agree, and I understand his recommendation. I don't agree with it. That's all. All right. All right. Thank you. And I'm sorry, Ms. Kuhn. Um, yes, Your Honor. Um, I agree. May start summer. So whoever has the Memorial Day vacation that or time would make sense. Mr. Mansick knows that my client's family is coming in around the 4th of July this year. Obviously, she's not going to take the 4th of July holiday because it is Mr. Mansick's, but she has extended family. So maybe his aunts, uncles, you know, a lot of people are coming in. So um, we found it um, really interesting that instead of using a May date, that the 4th of July date was the date that they had chosen. Um, given the contention with the case, Mr. Walker made the recommendation. We are in agreement with the recommendation. Um, from A to Z, Your Honor. Judge, my client did not know that she has family plans. As you know, these parties don't communicate. He did not know that. It was my suggestion because it seemed easier. And with respect to Memorial Day, Judge, it's just that the child is still going to be in school for Memorial Day. That's all. I just suggested the fourth. Whoever has the fourth would have first choice. That's all. It really was that innocent. I don't understand Ms. Kuhn's crazy accusations. Well. But the, the child will be in daycare throughout the summer months too, correct? Yes. Correct. All right. But going well, forward, she'll be in school at some point. All right. I know it's unfortunate because I don't know what, no matter what the recommendation is or the order of this court, it's not going to appease either party, uh, which is unfortunate. And uh, and hopefully Mr. Mansky and Mr. Vood will, will learn to communicate for this child because the child, the child gets older, the child's going to sense that there's really tension between the parents and uh, that child's going to be in counseling before we know it uh, which is unfortunate but if they want this court think about it mr mansick miss but you want a total stranger to raise your child and that's what's going to happen you can't start agreeing upon these things it should be flexible work with each other for the benefit of your child but if you can't this court's going to make all these determinations where your child's going to go to school what time parenting time will be and uh, i really don't want a stranger doing that 
but uh, so at this point in time, the, the court's going to rely upon Mr. Walker um, and his recommendation. The court's going to adopt his recommendation. Again, that all uh, training time exchanges shall be at 9 a.m., either from daycare or school. If there's no school or daycare, the exchange shall be at the Saline Police Department. It begins at 9 a.m. Mother shall make a parenting time of two hours. Uh, that occur on uh, should be on March 18th, 2024. That's uh, a week from Monday, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. With respect to uh, summers, each should have two weeks of uninterrupted so, so non-executive vacation in the summer. Uh, mother shall have the first choice in even years. So mommy need to make that choice made to known to dad before April 1st. Uh, the uh, you, you shall not take your vacation time during the other party's weekend, and uh, finally, both parties shall complete the high conflict solutions workshop and, and provide a one hundred word essay in exchange to the other party. Um, finally, when do we? Is there a time frame for the evaluation from Doctor Wooten? It's my understanding that he was making phone calls. Um, he's completed his interviews with the parties and his observations of the parties with their child. Um, and so I'm hoping that we see it later this month. Okay. Uh, do you want to, we've already taken the proofs. I don't see any need for another pretrial conference. I suppose once you get the evaluations, is your intent to schedule a mediation with Mr. Godfrey? We have mediation scheduled for June 4th, Your Honor. Oh, with, with the Godfrey? Yes. All right. Well, thank you for that update. I, I don't make a note of that. Uh, do we have a uh, June fourth at what time? Well, I think we start at nine. It's all day. Okay. All right. Well, the, the court will have the the file available. The court will be available if I, the court can assist. So, thank you for that information. Uh, all right. Uh, all right. That will conclude this matter. You can all zoom out. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you, Mr. Walker. The court will adopt the recommendation. Copy mailed out to counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you.